Hey, so thanks for coming. Um, uh, this, I'm really glad that we f found a, a slot to do this session. I really didn't know that this was going to exist when the call for papers uh, was happening a few months ago. I'm doing another session tomorrow as well, which is interesting. But I think that this, this is really on a lot of people's minds. And it's sort of probably burningly important for all of us. Um, <clears throat> who's a Drupal service provider of some kind? Who is building what sites and applications for clients? Who does Drupal inside an organization for that organization? OK. Who's already deployed something on Drupal 8? Awesome. I want to hear about that afterwards, please. No? <laughs> yes, no. That's, we'll have some show and tell later. Um, so the, um, the real session title, I apologize. These are terrible slides. I put them together very, very rapidly. Um, um, so there's text at the bottom. You should never have text in the bottom third of your slides when you're presenting. Um, yeah, so the actual real title of the, of the session, why Drupal 8, why now? P.S. Drupal 7 is still awesome. That's actually the entire takeaways <laughs> of the session. Um, remember that. Drupal 7 is still awesome. Most people call me Jam. Um, I have a really fun job title. I'm very, I have a very active um, stream here. I will be releasing plus minus 75 original podcasts this year, um, focusing heavily on Drupal open source um, and really spanning the, spanning the range from highly technical conference sessions um, to conversations with people who are building technology and using it. And um, you know, I find it interesting, so, and I'd be very happy to see you. You can sign up on iTunes, all the things. Um, that's my email. That's my Twitter, where I'm also very active. Yes, I own this suit. <coughs> and um, that was a very happy accident that happened at um, DrupalCon Portland. It was, it was, uh, it was a funny moment. <coughs> so I was invited to be the f a, a featured speaker at, for the third time running at the CXO Day of Drupal Camp London, which was very nice. And I was speaking with one of the organizers of that right around the beginning of the, the, of the year. And and he said to me, as long as that's all it does, then we're fine. But everybody watch out for that bit of wall. So uh, he runs a Drupal agency in London. It is uh, not huge, but he's doing very well. Uh, their target is to go to 30 people this year. And they've got good turnover, and they're surviving. So that's, that's great. And uh, he said to me, you know, <clears throat> Jam, you've got context over in the large scale Drupal group. You know lots of people who are doing this. Um, they're real thought leaders. They're, you know, they're doing so much with Drupal. Uh, over in the agency side of, of, of things, we'd be really, really curious to know what they're doing and what they're thinking so that we can work with them, react properly, and, and, and make sure that <clears throat> everybody profits from this new release of Drupal. Very cool. I called my friend Mike Myers, who's the vice president of large scale Drupal. Does everybody know what LSD is? Uh, LSD is a group of very large Drupal end users who get together and have a lot of private conversations and a few public sessions about their use of Drupal. So you have extremely large media companies, extremely large sports franchises, um, people like the company that does League of Legends, which uh, does all of its esports on Drupal. It's by bandwidth the largest user of Drupal, I think even more than weather.com, um, and NBC Universal, and um, people that we're not allowed to name, but very, very, very large corporations using Drupal. So Mike is the vice president of that. We, he and I talked. Um, I was allowed to contact some members, and we did a survey. And talking with these people, they said, you know, the digital agency people, they're the real thought leaders in this space. We'd really like to know what their plans are for using Drupal 8 so that we can be ready for that and react appropriately. So apparently, I was the only. So I ended up being the only the man in the middle, right? The person I was supposed to tell both groups what they were. And they had no thoughts of their own. So anyway, so um, I really had fun. I've talked with a bunch of people in the last, um, let's say, six weeks or so about what's going on with Drupal 8 right now, what it is, what it does, what's going on out in the wild, what's changing, and um, I want to share that with you. And um, help you 
for example, when you have a customer conversation, people are having clients come, potential clients come to them and say, well, requirement one for this site is it's got to be in Drupal 8, and requirement two this, and requirement three that. And, and in a lot of cases, that's just not right right now. And you need to talk them off the cliff. You need the business. You need the pipeline, right? But they don't need Drupal 8 right now, and they need to understand that Drupal 7 is still supported, and so on and so forth. So that's a large part of this conversation. <clears throat> Did everybody see Angie's keynote this morning? Yeah, right? Drupal 8 is really, really cool, right? Um, who got really excited about Drupal 8 because of that? Yeah. So we've been excited about it a little too early and a little too long, and some of that leaked out. <laughs> so, you know, like, it got into the hands of the wrong people. So let's just go over. Um, let's just go over. This is, uh, I think, relatively complementary to the list that Angie presented this morning, but a few things. Um, features of Drupal 8. So. Um, the first two, this is sort of listed from outside the site to inside the site, so front end to, to, to back end. <coughs> the first two points essentially mean that it, we're in a multi-device reality and Drupal can cope with that, whether it's your Apple Watch or your tablet or your phone or what have you. Um, displaying regular old websites, we do that very well and, and very easily out of the box. The second part, so um, it's not only, you know, uh, we used to call it mobile first, right? Responsive design. So RESTful first, the RESTful architecture internally, externally, means that Drupal 8 can ingest anything, uh, any, any, any data from any web service and, and also output data in any format. It doesn't have to be HTML5. The, there's a, the, the view, the piece of the view on Angie's slide this morning is actually expressed as serialized JSON, which is a view expressed as code to fit, to go into an app, to go into an Angular front end, what have you. So these first two mean that we can put Drupal into your refrigerator or your motorcycle or your shoes or, or your Fitbit or whatever it is. We're ready for this multi-device reality. And this is a huge benefit. Um, and it's going to mean that we're doing all sorts of things with Drupal that we never thought of before. Um, the authoring experience is much improved. Angie showed that off pretty well this morning. The incremental release cycle, the real point about that is that um, for the first time, we can have new features within the mainline release. And we have real core developers who, for their entire core development career, have never worked on a working, living, breathing, released system that we're using in the trenches. So that for the first time, and I'm not being critical, I mean, I'm saying it with as much love as I can muster, but they are going to have to come out of their ivory tower and help us make a working system for the people who work on Drupal, right? There's going to be no Drupal 9 head when Drupal 8 comes out. And we can make that better. So we get innovation within our main release. That's a huge advantage that we've never had before. <clears throat> the multilingual features in Drupal 8 that you can already use now are incredibly robust. And they're robust enough for live um, multilingual sites run by content authors already. They're really, really incredibly good. And um, uh, you know, especially over in Europe, we need this a lot. Configuration management, keep all your configuration code, version control it, roll it back, uh, roll it forward, it, it import, export. It gives us huge deployment advantages. It means that we can do deployment that's secure and predictable in, in ways that we've never done before. And I think it's going to you know, radically change our workflows uh, very, very soon. Angie was talking about Symfony and Twig and other external components that we've adopted. So the base of the pyramid of technologies that we're using is much broader now. We have a lot more eyes on the code, a lot more people um, fixing things. Our innovative, incredible ideas that we've always had as a community in the last 13 years, all of a sudden can also flow outwards because we're using, uh, let's see, it doesn't even say it here. You know, We're using an up-to-date version of PHP. We're using up-to-date patterns. Um, so uh, we can influence other projects and make them better, but we get a lot more, uh, a real influx of talent and all sorts of developers who always looked at our crazy, weirdo um, hooks and arrays world up to Drupal 7 now can look at our code and say, oh, I can use this. And so we're going to be able to find employees and colleagues a lot more easily. I've got an example of this coming up in the presentation. Drupal 7 is great, and we know it's great, and we can deploy it quickly, and that's one of the main points that I need to, to, to get across today is there's, there's no reason to abandon Drupal 7 at all right now. We love it. It's beautiful. It's our baby. Um, it happened very organically, right? All of the different internal systems and, and APIs evolved over time. Um, hook help has been in Drupal, uh, in Drupal unchanged since Drupal 3, okay? Um, 
it's very organic. It's a jungle. And it, we know how to use it, roughly. My friend Brent Wynn in Chicago is an extraordinary Drupalist. Um, he is the, one of the co-creators of what's called the, um, the demo framework dis distribution, which is turning into the lightning distribution. It's a, it's a standardized way of deploying large Drupal sites that um, they're working on, on Acquia, in Acquia. And it's, 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 it's really, really, check out Project Lightning. It's great. So I was talking with Brent about when he learned Drupal 7, he said, I'd, I'd uh, take a weekend and learn an internal system. And then I'd take another weekend and I'd learn another internal system. And then I'd take another weekend and I'd learn an internal system. And Drupal 7 has, um, I don't remember, is it 21, 22 internal systems? And <clears throat> created at different times by different people with different, um, in, under different circumstances. And they work in radically different ways, how they handle data, how they handle CRUD, CRUD operations, and so on. You really have to know. And also, as Angie pointed out, a lot of like um, using a lot of the, the hooks is like, it relies on your goodwill to write the right words in the right order. You know, it's all naming conventions. It's very, very fragile. Drupal 8 was conceived out of the box with a, with a unified idea. All of the internal systems work in one way for all of their standard operations. So um, Brant spent his weekend learning one internal system. And it turns out that he knows every system in core. All of the base level functionality is the same. And then all you have to do once you know that is learn each system specialty. So there's a lot more files. It's put together in a very different way. OO is interesting to read when you start out, figure out dependency injection patterns. But it's incredibly powerful. And you'll have a huge leg up. Because once you've gotten over that initial learning hump, you're already ready to roll across the whole system. It's a huge advantage for us. Decoupled architecture doesn't just mean Okay, that we can, now if we roll this back and close the circle, it doesn't just mean that we can use an Angular front end or uh, <clears throat> whatever JS framework is, is fashionable next week. Um, and it doesn't just mean that we can feed native apps with our data. It means <coughs> that if we don't like a particular implementation of something, we can swap it out for something else. Through the dependency injection pattern, that simply means you define that I need this kind of a service here, and then whatever it is, you can put it in. You can put stub code for testing. You can use the system uh, that, that, that it comes with by default, or you can put your own thing in there. Um, so, and it also means that you can turn off pieces of core that if, you're, if you've got a highly specialized app, you don't need to bootstrap all of core. You can turn pieces of it off without killing any kittens. That's huge. It's great. So there's some benefits that we're getting from all of these shiny new things in, in Drupal 8. The question on everyone's minds, right, um, especially the, the Large-scale Drupal people, um, how do we know when we're ready for it? How do we know when it's ready for us? And it's really, really hard to tell. And it, <clears throat> especially in large organizations, who knows the uh, product adoption lifecycle curve? Uh, okay, 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 good, okay, okay. Here's some different words that people use for it. And then there's the famous you know, adoption chasm. And I think Drupal has enough momentum that we're not going to worry about the chasm too much. I think we're confident that we're going to make this release. Um, happen, and in a large organization um, like NBC Universal, um, the, you know, one organization could be on a bunch of different points on this curve at the same time. For Drupal 8, we're over here somewhere, right? It's working. There are some sites online, um, um, and uh, but it's not actually released yet. There's no beta to beta upgrade path, so we're we're right, 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 right over here. So people uh, who want to get in, and this is where this if you're working for clients, um, you know, this can start to be interesting. If you want to have an advantage, if you want to be Drupal 8 experts out of the gate, right? you need to be in on this. You need to be looking at it now, upgrading modules, doing training, learning how to do all this coding, right? so that you can offer these services right when it becomes stable. <coughs> um, your customers might want to be able to do things that only Drupal 8 can do. And you want to be able to offer the innovative features ahead of the competition for them. You know, anywhere through here and anywhere where it hits, um, you know, 8.0 from from the introduction phase to the to the to the early adopters phase. You know, that could give you an advantage if you want to make an investment now. If you need massive, absolutely utterly rock stable, fully featured, uh, huge complex applications or you want to run extremely mission critical architecture for, for your, your organization, for clients, you really need to wait. You really need to wait until contrib catches up. You really, it's not time yet for that. Um, 
there's a big push on to get Drupal 8 out by the end of September this year. I really, really hope it happens for our sake, but um, of course, it's up in the air. But let's say it comes out 1st of October this year. Uh, historically, Contrib takes about a year to catch up on the one hand, so that might put, you know, put the safety point um, in Q3, Q4 of 2016. It might, um, but it depends. I mean, Drupal 8 core can do more than any version of core before. So for simple stuff, you know, safe and ready might be a lot earlier. It depends. Let's see what else I wrote down in my notes. Um, right, and exactly, so, and your definition of when safety starts, um, it's a little bit hard to tell. Is it when 500 contrib modules have been released, or is, or is it 1,000, or is it the modules that you need for your project, right? It's a little bit, it's not entirely sure. So. <clears throat> I think, and there's, and there's something important now to talk about. Um, so this is the other version of that. If you take, if you take that, then what happens is here, um, at this point, uh, the next product always starts, right? So that's, that's this. Um, and if we look at, if, if we say this is Drupal 7, I think what we can say safely this time is that this release is very different than anything that's happened before, and this maturity phase is actually going to be longer than any previous release. So. If we, let's see, so Drupal 6 has been supported for seven years. Right now, almost exactly. Uh, Drupal 7 has been out for four years and a month or two. And Drupal 7 support is going to continue throughout the D8 cycle, as far as we know, right? So important point, if somebody needs a new project now, which is not appropriate for Drupal 8, Drupal 7 support is not going away, right? And it's fully featured, and you know how to release it. So Drupal 7 is got, we don't even know three, four years of support in it, for sure. Um, we've got the new incremental release cycle, which makes Drupal 8 a longer release anyway. And um, Drupal 7 is actually adopting the inc incremental release cycle pattern as well. I think at a certain point, all of the action is going to move to Drupal 8, and it's going to be a no-brainer to choose Drupal 8. That would be a year from now, 18 months from now. We don't know when that, when that tipping point happens. But Drupal 7, not only does it have a lot of stuff backported from 8 already, Drupal 7 uh, is already architecturally ready for, there's a, there's a post by David Rothstein about this, um, it's already ready for incremental improvements, which is pretty interesting. So I think that Drupal 7 has a lot of legs on it. Um, so, so this means, for example, uh, uh, organizations who've invested a ton of money in Drupal 7 infrastructure, and they're very wary about spending for spending's sake, you can say to them, actually, your investment is completely safe. We will run this. It will be secure. We can even add new functionality when you need. And at the point at which you ask for something that Drupal 7 simply cannot do, Drupal 8 will definitely be ready for us, because there's no question that you can run Drupal 8, uh, 7 sites for years to come and, and amortize the costs over more years, make money with them, whatever your mission is, no problem. So <clears throat> this is sort of the beginning of the talking people off the Drupal 8 cliff conversation that you need to have. It is um, great technology that you know how to work with. It is secure. Support is not going away for it. And um, the upgrade situation is, is very different <coughs> to any that we've had in the past. This is also a terrible slide. I apologize for so much text, but it was the easiest way to get, um, to get this together. So as of right now, let's go through this a bit. Now, I never use these. Oh, look, see, I never do this in my sessions. Let's see if I can do this, because it's a little bit tall for me to be waving at it. So as I said, uh, and I'll jump up and down a little bit here. So if you got to do a, a, a big site, OK? A uh, big site, large, big site, and it's in public, um, well, you should really, really run that on Drupal 7. There's no question. Um, and it, you know, anything that needs people to log in and create content and be in groups and interact with the site at all. Well, Drupal 8 just simply does not do that right now. And there's no reason not to take a fully featured CMS that you know how to deploy rapidly and securely and release it right now and run it for three, four, five years. So there's no reason not to. That is definitely a case to use Drupal 7. What's great for Drupal 8 right now is to start learning. You need to know how to do this. A year from now, you need to be able to, to really make it sing. It's a great time for internal projects. It's a great time to make your intranet, like try it out, or your public-facing company site if you can invest the time on it, or 
um, an example I'm going to show today, uh, start product development based on Drupal 8 code. It's a great time to do R&D. It's a great time to do prototyping. It's a great time to do internal work on Drupal 8. Um, frankly, if you've got people who need a site, they want to do something, but it doesn't have to be out next month, um, if they can wait till the end of the year, it's a, probably a great case to talk with them about, let we, you know, let's do this. If you can wait till the end of the year, then, you know, together, we'll assess Drupal 8, 1st of October, let's see how it's looking, and then, you know, maybe I can uh, uh, give you a site in Drupal 8. Um, so the, 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 the investment point for Drupal 7 is, if you've already invested a ton of money in it, don't be afraid, that's great investment. Um, if you want to get in <coughs> on the ground with Drupal 8 and spend money now on Drupal 8, maybe help support some of the upgrades, really, you're going to get absolutely the most value for money over time if you're spending money on Drupal 8 now, and Drupal 8's going to run for, you know, four or five years as the main release, and then be in long-term support for another four or five years, right, maybe? So you can really, really get a lot of bang for your buck by investing in Drupal 8 now. So if they can wait, that's maybe a good argument. Can you do it with core? Well, Drupal 8 core is kind of amazing, okay? And Drupal 8 core has, um, let's see, you can just about get it to do a blog right now. So it's got content, it's got views, it's got blocks, it's got relationships, and it's got multilingual. It also does integrations, actually, really well. So if you can do it with just core, like a fancy brochure site, actually I've got an example of a couple of those and it's pretty great. Um, it's that, that, might be, that might be a good sign that you could do a site with Drupal 8 right now. Um, but you don't get almost anything with it. Uh, I was talking with Michael Schmidt from Amazy Labs about uh, doing a site in Drupal 8, and they are used to using Node Queue. Are you familiar with Node Queue? Yes. Well, how do you do Node Queue uh, without Node Queue? Hmm. Everything in Drupal 8 is an entity, and 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 all entities are fieldable, and all fields are entities, and entity references in Drupal 8 core. So, what if you make a block? that has an entity in it with an entity reference. Um, so essentially, they built a node queue system out of core. Not only is that you know, a really interesting workaround, but it also points out that with this new architecture, we're going to need less modules. We're going to need fewer modules. We're going to, there are, I believe, thousands of best practices that we don't even know about yet in Drupal 8 as a consequence of this incredibly powerful backend it's an incredibly powerful system that's been put together very carefully. I mean, even Drupal 8 um, admin layer is all views, right? Who can, who can um, build a Drupal view? You can make any backend that you want for your Drupal now. You can completely customize it. That's incredible. We could never do that before. That's unbelievable. It's so exciting. So we don't even know how we're going to be working with this system yet. Um, so brochure, simple, small brochure sites, <clears throat> they're possible right now. They, um, I've got a couple examples. They look pretty good. Like I said, if you want to be training and preparing for the next release, it's a great time. Um, however, large, mission critical, user-generated content, all that stuff, you, don't, you cannot be doing it in Drupal 8 right now. It's not possible. And you've got great you know, processes to release secure, stable states, uh, sites. So why wouldn't you be doing that? Um, if you're going to, if you, if you have a, 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 a Drupal 8 candidate, there's no security coverage for Drupal 8 right now. And that's a, that's a giant red flag. And you need hosting expertise to host it securely. And it shouldn't be on shared infrastructure. It should be very, very carefully sandboxed. And it should be backed up so that if you lose it to some sort of attack that we're not on top of right now, that, uh, you know, that's still OK for you. Very important point. Um, another really important point that is actually incredibly stable, there's never been a beta release at this stage that's been so stable and so great to work with because we've got such an amazing testing infrastructure in place, because people have been working with it so, so, so carefully for so long. Um, it's actually in great shape. No security coverage. No security coverage. There is no security coverage for Drupal 8 right now. Um, you can build Drupal 7 sites right now with an eye to upgrading them later. Angie um, uh, talked about this. There are some points in her slides this morning that you should check out, but you should also check out um, DrupalCon Amsterdam, Future Proof Your Drupal 7 site by Dave Reed. Um, 
just Google Amsterdam future proof Drupal, something like that. Um, it's an hour of your life that you will be, well, first of all, he's funny. The information is golden, and it's incredibly valuable for all of our jobs. He goes through and point for point, module for module, hook for hook, just gives a ton of information about all the stuff that you shouldn't use in Drupal 7 anymore, all of the patterns that are going to be killed, and all the stuff that you should be thinking about when building a Drupal 7 site with an eye to upgrading it to Drupal 8 a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. It's a really, really great, really great session. Um, if you're looking to hire people, having a reputation as a company that <coughs> lets its developers contribute is a great way to hire people and retain people. If you want to get up and running and you're looking to hire new people, it might be a really good time to consider working with Drupal 8 in some capacity because it's simply a very attractive proposition for a lot of people. Um, so let's see. Contributing, of course, and we still need to get the damn thing out the door. So. Um, you know, please do contribute. That would be incredibly helpful. Um, it's, it's not documented. And the documentation that was written last week, in some cases, is not valid this week. So, so if you want to run, if, you've, if, if the project that you have in mind meets all of these other criteria for doing a Drupal 8 site, um, you better have in-house, real in-house PHP expertise. Either a Drupal core contributor, somebody who can run a PHP debugger, a Symfony developer, people have real real, real uh, PHP chops because there are times when you know, your site just might give you a white screen of death and there's no way that you can understand why unless you can step debug it and find out. If you do, hooray, because you're going to give a patch back to the project, right? But otherwise, very scary because you don't even know how long you're going to be waiting until that gets fixed, found and fixed by other people. So, um, right, so let me read you a, po a, a bit of Angie's post webchick.net slash critical rundown Bogota. This is from uh, almost exactly a month ago, February 14th. Um, <coughs> it's, it was Valentine's Day. Angie is clearly incredibly romantic. Um, it's, a, it's a hardcore technical post about everything that needs to be done to release Drupal 8. It's, it's, it's definitely worth a read if you're interested in that stuff. So Angie's uh, Valentine's Day missive. This is just one paragraph, but it's uh, very, very important. Uh, security. Because Drupal 8 hasn't shipped yet, it's not following Drupal's standard security advisory policy, so there are still outstanding public security issues, 13 as of this writing. We need to resolve most of these prior to providing a Drupal 8 beta to beta upgrade path, as this is the time when we signal to early adopters that it's an OK time to start cautiously building real sites on Drupal 8. So last point here, there's no beta to beta upgrade path for a very good reason. Um, and I talked with, uh, yes, it was Amazie Labs, and they run their company site on Drupal 8, and they had it in uh, Drupal 8 Alpha. And to get it from the last Alpha version to Beta 2 uh, took a 6,000 line upgrade function to make it work. Um, and at the time, uh, so the US CEO, CEO of, of, so they have a US unit, she said, why don't we just rebuild it and port the content over? I mean, it's just a brochure site. And Michelle Schmidt, the CTO and, and co-founder said, no, because we're learning and we want to do this right. And so the developer they had who spent a weekend writing that upgrade function, you know, he probably knows Drupal 8 core better than anyone right now. But if your idea of a fun weekend is not <laughs> writing 6,000 line upgrade functions, hold off on putting a public site up in Drupal 8, OK? <laughs> so I'm going to be putting these slides up, in line, uh, uh, up online um, so um, <clears throat> you guys can uh, definitely refer to them. <coughs> Who's already on Drupal 8? There are a few sites out on Drupal 8. Uh, there's this beautiful little brochure site, Drupal.com. Drupal.com is the site. It's designed for you to send prospective clients to when they want to know what this Drupal technology is about. It's a marketing site. It needs to be beautiful. I am now on the content team for this site, and I've been assigned to, f to find and write case studies for marquee brands um, who are using Drupal. And it's, um, it's a fun project. We're getting going on that. And we're trying to define what the site is and what it should be and where it's going. And it's, it's interesting. It's Dries' property. And um, you know, it's really for the project and for all of us in the project. So Drupal.com is running Drupal 8 already. I keynoted Drupal Camp Vienna at the end of 2013. And um, along the way, I, uh, uh, oh, while I was there, I met this guy called Chris Jolly. And Chris Jolly is the C 
CTO, co-founder, I don't even know, of a company called OnTrack, O-N-T-R-A-Q. And OnTrack is specialized in uh, C programming, legacy ERP integration, e-commerce, and like taking anything old and making it web-facing. And so they're super, super, super hardcore geeks. And he said, um, I came because we heard that Drupal 8 is going to have Symfony components in it, and we're Symfony developers. And if it's true, I never have to touch Typo 3 again. <laughs> right? So I said, oh, Chris, sure, it's totally true. And I, I took him through a lot of the stuff that we're doing. I showed him some examples. Um, and we talked over the weekend. We talked several times. <clears throat> and it was nice. I ran into him at DrupalCon Amsterdam. So that's, uh, you know, what is that, nine months later? Is that a coincidence? But anyway, nine months later, he said, <laughs> I just thought of that. Um, yeah, so nine months later, he said, we have a client, signed, a client site online in Drupal 8. Thank you so much for telling me all that stuff. I took it home. I followed your advice. I went home. I downloaded it. I opened it up. I looked inside. It's like, hey, this is just a dialect of symphony. I can, this is totally easy for me to use. And they got to work. OK? So that's a sign that we'll be able to hire new people, that we'll be able to attract a whole new community, and that this stuff is really, really great, and it really, really works. And you know all that? Have you, who's heard of this headless Drupal? Headless Drupal, headless Drupal. We're not supposed to say headless anymore. <laughs> I did see a, a presentation at, at Drupal Camp Brighton where a guy was talking about bumless Drupal, which is pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, um, we're supposed to say decoupled Drupal now. Um, and this is really interesting. So this has been online uh, f since last summer already. And <clears throat> this is Drupal 8 as the presentation layer and as the content management system, which is you know, what Drupal gig really is. Yes. Um, so, but it integrates two different Oxide e-commerce instances, a B2C, instance and a B2B instance. And they are, in turn, integrated with, with at least one ERP system, uh, uh, re resource uh, like logistics systems. And all of that is integrated with a Symfony application, which is for OAuth 2 single sign-ons between all of the systems. So it's very elegant, um, relatively straightforward. Um, and exactly what Drupal 8 was designed to do. This is exactly, this is modular application design. This is the way everything's going. Like, Drupal is great at content management. Um, Silex is for writing like super, super targeted, efficient micro applications. Use them for what they're good at. So, a Symfony application for, for single sign on, e commerce for doing e commerce, and Drupal for managing content and, in this case, presenting it. Fantastic. Um, and you can do things like when you're in the, um, whoa, don't, oh. so when you're in the, um, when you're, in the, uh, when you're in the B2B portal, yes. So I'm never going to use this thing again. When you're in the B2B shop, um, business uh, uh, wholesale clients can talk with the salespeople from, from Zomakabe and say, and they can have a conversation, and the, the salesperson can make them an offer, change the sales conditions, like make a bulk offer or make a special coupon code or something in the ERP system, which is propagated through the Oxid instances into the site. And when the customer refreshes the page, they can get a special offer live while talking with the salesperson. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So this is Drupal 8 online, decoupled architecture. Um, really, really great. This is a screenshot of an iPad application. This is the logo for a project called Lissa. It's not part of the interface. Lissa. This is being built by a company called One Agency. It's on GitHub and on Drupal.org. It's already been open sourced. This is a Drupal 8-based product. It's an R&D phase. Uh, One Agency is a part of the Aussie group. They're based in Belgium. So <clears throat> this is a second screen application for live events. Uh, this is obviously sports is a very easy use case to talk about, but concerts, conferences, what have you. Essentially, um, you can be watching the match uh, of, of your club on a Sunday, um, but there's everything else going on in the league at the same time. So while you're watching your match, the second screen is giving you timelines of all the other matches that are happening at the same time. And uh, so in the back end, this is Drupal 8. Each uh, uh, other event is a node. Nodes have notifications, and those are completely customizable. In, in, in football, of course, it's yellow card, red card. 
gold, and so on. Um, that's completely customizable. Uh, this links in to the Drupal instance through um, Rabbit Messaging Queue and, and WebSockets for push notifications. So then you've got this timeline, and while you're going on, um, and it's also got things like fun things like social media integration. So there's an editorial team sitting at the media organization following the games, putting up anything that's interesting into this stream, putting up and, and, and you know, social media and everything and throwing that in there. While you're watching your match, you can hit anything on the timeline. This will go back and show you a replay of what happened in the video stream, which is fantastic, OK? So this is all happening on your mobile device. So you get this incredible rich experience of the whole day going on. And this is powered by Drupal 8. Um, it's a prototype. I've seen parts of a demo. Um, they're going to be working on this a lot more. They're looking to sell this. and. Um, Nothing else does this. Adobe Experience Manager, nothing, no one offers anything like this in the content management space. Um, and they've already open sourced it. It's fantastic. Check out Lisa. It's kind of amazing. And I think it's really, really going places. The um, Schweizerische Gemeinnützige Gesellschaft has a website up. Five minutes. And um, for legal compliance, it needs to be in four languages. It needs to be in German and French and Italian and um, I didn't even know what it's called in English. It, the, there's the fourth. Well, sorry? Romanche. Romanche? OK, so Rito Romanisch or Ladino, yeah. right? Yeah. Seid ihr Schweizer? Uh, nein, ah, alles klar, OK. Um, <laughs> so this is a very beautiful brochure site. And right now, it's in German and in French. This is Drupal 8. It is um, simple, easy to use, and the, the, the organization itself they don't know or care that it's on Drupal 8. They have a website that's beautiful and that they can use. They're entering and managing their own content. That was the point of doing all this. Who remembers the webmaster is dead, right? The old Drupal slogan. So anyway, that's this. It's already running on Drupal, uh, Drupal 8. So this is, uh, this is uh, French. And then the German site looks like that. And the other two languages are still coming. Um, I ran into the crazy nut jobs called druid.fi in London last weekend. Um, it's an amazing Drupal shop from Helsinki that's doing very well. They're growing, um, and they're hilarious people to hang out with. And they basically look like a heavy metal band. And I mean, literally, the CTO has hair down to here, and he's about this tall and huge. And, uh, oh, Jam, we have to tell you, site we just built on Drupal 8, it's amazing. <laughs> so, so this is La Cariques Kusalba, and uh, that is an, a healthcare provider in Finland. And, uh, they need to, they need a new application. You've heard of them? Yeah. Yeah. So they needed a new website and they've got a new design. Um, and the Druid guys decided that they were going to provide an incremental upgrade. And this is kind of amazing. It touches on migrate, it touches on, um, on CMI to some extent. So they built a new application into the Drupal 8 front end, essentially. And it's fed by a back end data source, right? REST first. We remember that, right? The back end data source for the Drupal 8 application is the old Drupal 7 website that they had all the time. Yes, I thought they were crazy until I realized all the content authors know how to use that back end, right? All of the processes are in place. It's not broken. So they still do their work over there while they get the Drupal 8 architecture right, and then over time, they can start moving subsystems and features over and migrating them into the new system. It's talking about best practices that we never thought of before. It's crazy genius, OK? It is the weirdest thing I've heard in the last couple of weeks. So look, Drupal 8 is going to be incredible and exciting and fun and give us all sorts of benefits. There are some real value from adopting it now if you can, and you need to be thinking about it and doing training and so on. Their Drupal 7 is not in any way dead. And if you need help talking people off the cliff, there's a lot of support. There's a great migration path. It's fully featured. It's secure. We can deliver it rapidly. We have established processes, and so on and so on. And if you really need to scare them, then throw in things like, well, Drupal 8 doesn't have any functionality, and we need to port that module first. And oh, by the way, security, and a much more expensive server. And at some point, they'll calm down. Drupal 7 is great, and Drupal 7 is the greatest, largest, most fully featured CMS um, that there is right now. Okay, It is simply better than Drupal 8 by virtue of we've been using it in the wild for four or five years. <coughs>
quick rundown of when you could consider doing something in Drupal 8, keeping the, uh, keeping the negatives in mind as well. And um, yeah, any questions? I killed him. Okay, thank you for coming. Thanks. <clears throat>